This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. It has been long accepted that Final Cut is the most efficient video editing program. Even by those who don't like it and who don't use it, they say that, yeah, if you have an old system or maybe a weaker system like this base MacBook Pro, it's by far the best way to go. But today, I am going to challenge that notion and I'm going to be comparing it to the latest version of DaVinci Resolve and we will settle this once and for all. Now over here I have opened up the first test that we're gonna run and this is a 20 second 4k clip for stabilization. I like my shots super smooth so let's go ahead and click and I'll start my timer. As you guys can see Final Cut Pro is using 95% of the graphics. It's making good use of that. The CPU is at 13% and bam we are done. Took 46 seconds. We'll open up Resolve. I'll go ahead and hit stabilize, start my timer. Okay, wow, so the graphics card is also at 96% now, and the CPU is actually a little bit lower than in Final Cut, but it does seem like we're taking a bit longer. We're at 40 seconds now at only 34%. Finally, it's almost done. There it is, two minutes. So that took a lot longer, even though the graphics card usage was also almost maxed out. Let's go ahead and take a look at some 4K footage. This is H.264 4K footage in a 4K timeline. No issues, even on a base MacBook Pro. And from what I heard for years is that Resolve is very resource intensive. You need a high-end graphics card, but they've been making great improvements over the last couple of years that I've been tracking. Now, here it is with one LED applied. As you guys see, we had some stutters there. Almost perfect, but we are getting some drop frames. Let's go into the color tab, and we're at 27 frames per second. Now, this project is a 30 frames per second project. If you're doing 24 FPS, that means you can handle a full LUT applied at full 4K, and Resolve is doing that just fine on this integrated graphics laptop. And then let's go ahead and go to two LUTs, which I typically test on these higher end systems. And it looks like we're only able to play back at 21 frames per second if we have two LUTs applied. Now, let's go ahead and see what Final Cut does. And it looks to be fairly smooth, maybe slightly smoother than Resolve. Our graphics card is basically maxed out. Okay, I'm seeing some more drop frames. Uh, unfortunately, Final Cut doesn't have that nice little readout. Let's jump to one LUT. It seems to be pretty close to Resolve. I'm not seeing like an advantage working with Final Cut. And then without a LUT, it is playing back perfectly smooth. I could tell that it's smoother than with a LUT applied. And the GPU usage is about 60%, just like Resolve. So playback looks surprisingly close. And now I'm curious about exporting because this is what takes a while on these base MacBook Pros. But before we take a look at that and also some HEVC 10-bit footage, I gotta give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, now is the perfect time and Squarespace is the best way to go. That's because you can make a great looking website with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours have been running for many years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. I personally have been using and recommending Squarespace for over five years now, and I'm gonna continue doing so. Go ahead and start your free two-week trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash or by using the custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, so I have my settings dialed in here. Let's go ahead and start the export in compressor. We are using about 90% of the GPU and about 10, 11% of the CPU here. Okay, this is taking a while. <laughs> Three and a half minutes already, it's not done. And this is a one minute project. All right, finished up there. Three minutes and 54 seconds. That means if you have a 10 minute YouTube video with you know some color corrections, maybe some white balance adjustments, a little tiny grade on there, you're looking at about 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes to uh, export that. Our settings are identical. Let's go ahead and get started here. And right away, okay, this is very interesting. Um, a minute and 40 seconds remaining. Our GPU is at 98%, instead of 90, it's at 98. Our CPU is at 23% instead of about, uh, I saw it go up to 12, 10, 11, 12 in Final Cut. Do you guys hear those fans? It was silent in Final Cut, a minute and 41 seconds. So that is 
twice as fast. That means that if you have a 10 minute project, you know, for YouTube or wherever, with some, a light grade on there, maybe even a LUT, you're looking at maybe roughly 18 minutes or so, 17 minutes, instead of closer to 40 minutes. I did not expect that at all. Hats off to you, Blackmagic. They've been making a huge improvement. I mean, I remember back when I started testing them, 12.5 was slower than Premiere Pro. It took forever, maybe four times slower than Final Cut, way less efficient. Then they matched up to Premiere, then they beat out Premiere, and look what we have here. So this is H.264. Let's go ahead and open H.265. This is 8-bit 4K H.265 playing back. I have one LUT applied, and now we're at 92% GPU usage uh, just to play it back, but it is playing back smoothly, 24 frames per second. I think we probably would have the same result if this was a 30 FPS project, it would be almost perfectly smoothly. Keep in mind, this is a full 4K timeline, and this is the base MacBook Pro. I have H.265 selected, 20 megabit per second, because it's a much more efficient codec, uses about half the space for the same quality, and now you can upload to YouTube with this, before you couldn't. <clears throat> oh my goodness, it is flying. 40 seconds remaining, 39. GPU's at 97, 98. CPU's at 31. So it's using even more resources. And this thing is just going, <laughs> bam, 50 seconds. That is more than twice as fast as H.264 footage. Back in the day, HEVC was so hard to work with. And look at that. Playback's the same. Exporting is way faster, 50 seconds. Let's see if Final Cut can beat that. So as far as playback, it's looking about the same. Graphics card's almost maxed out, so there's no way I can throw on another LUT on here. It's definitely going much faster this time than with H.264. It's been 40 seconds. Uh, we're more than halfway done. CPU and GPU usage looks similar to H.264, less than in Resolve. Resolve is using 30% of the CPU and more graphics performance. And we're already above, 50, okay, we're at 55, 56 seconds, already above Resolve. Not by much, but this is very interesting and incredible. I didn't think I'd see the day where Final Cut is being beat out, not only matched in the timeline, which is where Final Cut really excels, but being beat out for exporting took a minute and eight seconds compared to 50. Now that's not a huge difference. Might be instead of taking 10 minutes to export, maybe 13, 14. Uh, but what this really shows me is this was almost four times faster, th about three and a half times faster than exporting the H.264. And then you'll save time uploading as well in space. If you have one of these newer laptops with a T2 chip, definitely go for the H.265. I do want to do some 10-bit footage. Let's go ahead and open that up. Playing back this 10-bit footage in an HDR 4K timeline without any LUTs, uh, we're already looking at 71% graphics usage, 20% CPU definitely is more difficult. And you can kind of, you know, take this as, you know, a couple layers of corrections if you're not going to use a LUT. Um, we are dropping frames more so than before. Uh, let me do a simple test. I want to do export because this takes forever. And I want to see if Resolve is going to do anything different than Final Cut. We have 10 bits selected, uh, HDR output right there. Let's get it started. It's been 30 seconds. I hear the fans ramping up. And that is because, the in this case, our CPU usage is at 96% and our graphics are at like 6%. Because this laptop doesn't have dedicated hardware encoding for 10-bit, that stuff is just hitting the market. It's fairly new. Not a lot of systems have it unless uh, you have an NVIDIA <laughs> laptop. I did a video recently on RTX, the super powerful RTX laptop. I'll link it after this one and you guys should check it out. It's one minute elapsed and it looks like we have 19 minutes remaining. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. Let's just call it roughly 20 minutes. It looks like playback is fairly similar. Graphics are at 96% with one light applied, 98%. We're at 20, 21, yeah. So it seems like very similar to Final Cut. The performance basically matches up. Let's hit the export. I have HDR10 enabled here. So it's been about a minute, our fans are up. It's showing about 16 and a half minutes remaining, slightly faster than Final Cut, but not by much. But I'm guessing we're gonna have the same result as Final Cut. We can't really leverage the graphics that much here because it has to use all the CPU for that. Uh, but this was very interesting. So I would not suggest HDR editing, but if you're editing other things, 
DaVinci Resolve now, the timeline performance is identical to Final Cut. Stabilization was a little bit slower. Of course, there's differences maybe in quality and how much it's mapping, that kind of stuff. But as far as the graphics performance and uh, for grading, DaVinci Resolve is no longer a slouch that required a ton of good hardware, really high-end graphics cards to run. Even on a base MacBook Pro, it is doing just as well and even better in some cases uh, than Final Cut is. So Apple, step it up. DaVinci Resolve, great job. This was very interesting. If you guys want me to do the same thing, but with a much higher end, more powerful system, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you guys can see what Resolve can do with some other hardware, I have a video right over there. You guys check it out. It's very interesting as far as the current state of video editing technology. Click that circle above to subscribe. Go check out Squarespace if you need a website. They are awesome. Seriously, guys, this has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.